Today, I'll talk about reference assemblies. Hello, friends of .NET. I'm Emil Edforth, and you can find me on Twitter at TerraJobst. In my videos on .NET Standard, I talked a lot about how we compile against assemblies. And I refer to them as reference assemblies, because these are the ones you're compiling against, they're not the ones you are running against. And I noticed on my conversations on Twitter um, and even on GitHub that many of you don't quite understand what reference assemblies are, why they exist, and how they work. So I thought I'd do a video where I show you a little bit more details on why we have reference assemblies, um, how they look like, and what they actually do. So let's actually just, before we go into that, let's actually just take a step back and look at the humble beginnings of .NET. And so what I have here is I have a very simple program that you have probably have heard of. It's called Hello World. And um, in the early days, uh, we actually designed the .NET framework in such a way that you can just compile C Sharp code without actually having to use a complicated build system or anything else. And so you can still do this today, although I wouldn't recommend that, um, mostly because it doesn't have all the features. But if you just go to uh, version 5 of the framework, you still find CSCXE in there. And uh, you can just specify hello.cs, and you will actually get hello.cxe out of it. And as you notice, there's no project file. There's just nothing there. And if you run hello.exe, you get what you would think you would get, in it, namely that it actually just runs. So CSC actually has a bunch of you know, defaults that it takes. You know, the output name is inferred from the file name. It has a default set of uh, references that you can actually use. And the question is, where are those references coming from? And it's actually quite simple. If you go to the actual folder that I just showed you here, um, there's actually a bunch of stuff in here. So you will actually find um, MS callup in here. You will find you know, system in here, system core. All of the .NET framework uh, assemblies are in here. And so when you actually run this whole enchilada, then the question is, why do we have reference assemblies? If the assemblies are in here, why are they not good enough? And for that, you have to understand that what you see here is the implementation of .NET Framework. So in my case, I'm running .NET Framework 4.6.2 on my machine. So when I compile using this mechanism I showed you here, I actually compile against implementation assemblies of .NET Framework 4.6.2. So what happens if I want to target an older version of .NET Framework? Well, let's say 2.0. Great, there's a 2.0 folder. But what happens if I want to target .NET Framework 4.6.1, or 4.6, or 4.5, or 4.0? Then you notice that all the 4x .NET Frameworks are in place updates. So they will literally replace all the bits in this folder here. So if I'm running 4.6.2, then the MS callup you saw here is .NET Framework 4.6.2's MS callup. And same holds true for all the rest of the assemblies in here. So now let's actually take a look at Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio, when you actually compile, uh, you know, you have Hello World in here, um, you can actually select which version of .NET Framework you're compiling. So in my case, I compile against 4.6.2. So if I'm using APIs, if you introduced uh, somewhere in the 4.6 time frame, like array.empty, for example, uh, everything works uh, as you would expect. But if I now change my target to say, I actually still want to run on .NET Framework uh, 4.5.2, for example, then I get a little this morning here. And uh, now I'm targeting 4.5.2. And I immediately get a compile error that tells me that, you know, array.empty doesn't actually exist in .NET Framework 4.5.2. And that makes sense, because if you actually go to MSDN and you say MSDN uh, array.empty, you would find out that we added this in .NET Framework 4.6. So unsurprisingly, when you target 4.5.2, you can't use that API. Now the question is, how does the compiler actually know that? Because as I showed you in this folder here, there's really no magic. It's just a regular assembly. In fact, let's just open up our trusted friend uh, IELTS spy here. And let's actually take a look at MS callib. Uh, MS call. Apparently, I can type. Let's just drag and drop this in here. And if I go to array, let's just say types only. And 
and we go to empty. It's just in there. So clearly, when I target 4, 6, 2, uh, this will all work fine. But if I'm targeting 4, 5, 2, how does the compiler know that this API doesn't exist? So to answer that, let's actually see how Visual Studio compiles. So when I'm actually compiling, what I have done is I have went to Tools, Options, Projects, and Solutions, Build and Run. And I said, please, MS Build, give me a full-blown diagnostic log. So when I'm actually going now to my output here, I see way more information. And I can actually find the invocation of CSC exe that MS Build is using. Let's just copy this to my other trusted friend, uh, Sublime. And for readability, let me just put all these references here on separate lines. And you can see that the MS code that we're passing to the compiler is not the one from C, Windows, uh, Microsoft.NET, blah, blah, blah. It's actually from this folder here, Program Files, Reference Assemblies, Microsoft Framework, blah, blah, blah. And you can see here there's a version number in that path that actually indicates the version of the environment that we are targeting. So now let's actually go to this folder here and see what we find in there. Let me kick out uh, the MS callup that we had here. And let me replace this with the MS callup that we find in here. And if I go to Array, then you will notice that E exists, but there's no empty. So the compiler doesn't actually know that .NET Framework 452 doesn't have array.empty. The reference assemblies do, because we have one set of reference assemblies per .NET Framework version. And those basically just indicate the API servers that you can use. In fact, if you look at the IL uh, spy output here, you would see that there's no implementation. The body is empty. And in fact, if you just click around here, that's true for all of the method bodies. And uh, if you just compare the sizes here, the MS code that is uh, you know, in Microsoft.NET, which is the implementation of the .NET framework, that one is like 5.5 uh, megabytes in size. If we go to the uh, 452 folder, it's 2 and a half. And that's not just because it's old, like the older version didn't, wasn't as big. It's just because all the IL is missing from those assemblies. So these are reference assemblies because they're stripped out of uh, any MS IL. So the way to think about reference assemblies are essentially they're the managed equivalents of header files. They just have the API definitions, but they don't have any, any code in them. And that allows us to, in the IDE, to say, you know what? I want to target an older version of .NET Framework. Um, and then we just pass you the right set of reference assemblies to make sure that you only use APIs that actually existed in that version of the framework. You will also notice in here that there is this drop down here. And you can say, Install Other Frameworks. And if you click on that, we will take you to a, a website where you can install uh, you know, other versions. And if you look at the runtime and the developer pack here, the difference really is the runtime is basically just what your customers need to run the .NET Framework. Whereas the developer pack uh, also contains the tools, like things like MS Build, CSC, and so on and so forth. And uh, they also contain the reference assemblies. So if you install the developer packs, that's the kind of thing that gives you the reference assemblies that you need in order to target that version of the framework. All right, I think that should conclude our look into reference assemblies. Um, I hope you found that helpful. Um, so next time you hear the term reference assemblies, think C program files reference assemblies and some place in there. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you later. Bye.